In my last video, I talked about how AMD is now pricing the RX 6600 XT, a 1080p graphics card, into what has traditionally been a 1440p card pricing structure. And I talked about how the universal set of pandemic excuses, or USOP, is just a smokescreen for explaining the higher MSRP pricing. In this video, we'll dive into examples of AMD's recent behavior, why the RX 6600 XT could have been priced lower and wasn't, and how AMD is moving forward to help raise pricing as we move into a post-pandemic world. Let's get into it. Last time I talked about how you could build a PC today, stands the GPU, for a similar price as last year, and how USOAP does not explain the large increase in GPU pricing. If you stop right now and put together a PC system at PC Part Picker, you can assemble a system for the similar price as you could have last fall when Big Navi and Ampere were announced. You can get a CPU, a CPU cooler, motherboard, RAM, SSD, power supply, case, fans, all for prices similar or slightly higher than last fall. So why didn't a universal set of pandemic excuses apply to all the other components in a PC? Sure, some parts are a little more expensive, but not to that same degree we are seeing with GPUs. The universal set of pandemic excuses just doesn't pass a simple rationality check, or as I like to say, it doesn't pass the laugh test. Now I think many of you still believe the MSRP pricing at $379 is due to USOAP. Okay, maybe AMD was a little aggressive on setting the higher cost to recoup margin. At most, I would attribute AMD to being $30 higher in their MSRP pricing due to USOAP. So the RX 6600 XT would have been $349 in normal times, and the RX 6700 XT would have been $449. But those are still price increases compared to the GPUs they replaced in the RDNA 1 generation. This is due to AMD's RDNA 2 cards with Infinity Cache performing very well against Nvidia's Ampere offerings. Don't get me wrong, technically AMD has done a great job to deliver RDNA 2 cards that perform very well, but the MSRP prices just slot in so very nicely to Nvidia's pricing structure. And remember, the Nvidia MSRP pricing structure was established in the middle of the pandemic, and Nvidia did not raise the prices from the Turing generation, only AMD has on their 60 and 70 series of cards. These two GPUs were always going to be more expensive than the GPUs they replaced. Want more evidence of AMD's behavior? You can go back to 2019 when AMD announced the price of the RX 5700 XT back at the E3 conference. That card was going to cost $449 and the 50th anniversary edition, which is just a factory overclock 5700 XT, was going to be $499. That was when they thought they were competing with the RTX 2070 at $499. But when Nvidia released the Super Refresh just days before AMD's infamous 7.7 release date, they quickly dropped their price and claimed the big debate because it was their first attempt and they were not as confident as to what would happen if they stuck with their original prices. Two years later, and in this environment, they are now very confident to raise MSRP prices. It's just AMD's slot-in pricing strategy based on the performance compared to NVIDIA. What bothers me about this card, this card is billed as a 1080p gaming card. In 2021, why should a 1080p gaming card cost more than $300? Traditionally, GPUs in the $300 to $400 range have been your entry-level 1440p cards. When NVIDIA released the RTX 2060 for $349, it was an entry-level 1440p card. AMD's own 5700 and 5700 XT targeted 1440p. The recently released RTX 3060 with its 12 gigabytes of VRAM allows for entry-level 1440p. And at higher resolutions, you see the performance of the RX 6600 XT fall off compared to its Ampere counterparts. It does not scale as well at higher resolutions. I don't think this card will age well over time. The MSRP of a 1080p GPU has been and should be sub $300, not sub $400. By the way, if you like videos like this, hit that like button and subscribe for more and let me know in the comments below your thoughts on pricing for a fast refresh capable 1080p GPU in 2021. Also, another thing about this card is if you look at how small the card is, the material cost for this card is comparable to a card that is a sub $300 GPU, and that is all. 
If you go over to Tech Power Up and compare the teardown picks of the Sapphire Pulse 5600 XT to the Sapphire Pulse 6600 XT, you can see that many of the components are very similar. Put all the parts on the table and compare it, and it doesn't justify the $100 AMD now wants to charge you. And even Buildzoid over at Actually Hardware Overclocking did his PCB analysis on that same Sapphire Pulse 6600 XT, and he said, this is a low-end card that got pushed into the mid-range, and that this is not a real mid-range card. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Finally, this card has 8 PCIe lanes and a 128-bit memory bus. Do you know what else traditionally has 8 PCIe lanes and a 128-bit bus? An RX 5500 XT that was a sub $200 GPU. And before that was the RX 560 4GB that was just $129. Also, the NVIDIA GTX 1650 and 1650 Super, both 128-bit memory bus. Again, sub $200 GPUs. Having design features of a 50 series card being applied to a sub $400 GPU should help bring the MSRP price down, not have it go higher. You can be sure that AMD and its AIB partners will have very high profit margins on this card and that they are going to make bank on this GPU. Which leads me to my next thought. Will 60 series cards now be in the $300 to $400 range forever? NVIDIA made that move with the RTX Turing based cards last generation and they upheld it this generation. Now last generation NVIDIA did create the 1660 series of GTX cards that served the sub $300 market and the 1650 series of cards for the sub $200 cards. Well, those GTX cards are gone and they have nothing to replace these class of cards. What makes me disappointed and frustrated is how easily AMD has adopted the slot and pricing strategy to move up their 60 series of cards into the sub $400 range and their 70 series into the sub $500 range. AMD is no longer the AMD many of us have come to know and root for over the past several years. With the capacity constraints at TSMC and its priority for other products, AMD is not looking at providing better value than Nvidia. Now they are just looking to provide similar value to Nvidia and it could be argued it's really lower value since AMD does not have comparable features as Nvidia. However, with all of that being said, I am starting to get a little more upbeat and I sense the winds of change are coming and things will begin improving around the holidays. And I say that based on some information that I've come across recently. I mean, why are GPUs so scarce and a markup so high? AMD, Nvidia, and AIBs want you to believe, no, check that, need you to believe that it is due to gamers and that gamers are causing the demand and with the higher gamer demand outstripping the supply, that is what is causing the higher prices and that miners are just a small contributing factor. But is that really true? Also, will Intel come in and save the GPU market and return mainstream GPU prices to normal? Will we ever see a 1080p graphics card below $300? I'll take a critical look at both of those topics next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one.